Cyber Frontier, bringing you the latest news on the local Colorado economy and initiatives that focus on the development of cybersecurity economics. You don't have to be a computer or cybersecurity expert to get plugged in. Your host, Chris Gorog, brings it straightforward, asks the tough questions, and brings the cyber world to a level of understanding for everyone. Chris is personable and opens up with our guests on issues we all would like to see addressed. You can find us on the web at www.newcyberfrontier.com. Now join our host as he introduces the topic for today's New Cyber Frontier. So welcome today. It's all about cyber here and we have a special guest and it's an honor to have the mayor of Colorado Springs, Mayor Southers, John Southers. Welcome today and thanks for joining. Hey, I'm glad to be with you. And we are definitely glad to hear from you because this is basically your brain trust that this cyber effort in Colorado Springs, and we wanted to give you the opportunity to tell the world, tell our listeners about the story of how this idea came together and was founded. You know, I, I reject the notion that it's my uh, brain trust because frankly, I personally uh, don't have the sophistication in cyber and cybersecurity that so many people do. But I'm smart enough to know that this is going to be a huge area of endeavor Mm -hmm. uh, over the next several years. As I see the world shaping up, uh, cybersecurity uh, is going to you know, do dominate our financial markets, our financial world, our manufacturing world. I mean, as it, it's been described to me, what good is it if you have a highly innovative manufacturing technique uh, that you've got patents for and whatever, if uh, a hacker can steal it from you or a, you know, a foreign nation can steal it from you mm -hmm. uh, in a heartbeat. It's a worthless uh, uh, property right. And so um, uh, cybersecurity is going to be a, a, a pervasive part of our lives going forward. And as mayor of Cairo Springs, it's become very apparent to me that there's a, uh, what I call kind of a triad of synergy in Colorado Springs that makes us ideal to be at the center of cybersecurity going forward. And let me just briefly explain that. Number one, uh, we have a military presence that is highly cyber dependent. I mean, look at our critical missions that are based here, whether it be U.S. Space Command, uh, NORAD Northcom, uh, and many others uh, that are you know, highly uh, cyber dependent. We'll be right back with the rest of today's show right after these brief messages from our sponsors. Cyber Resilience Institute helps build strong cyber communities designed to prevent members from attack. Like building a neighborhood watch, it takes coordination and a sharing community to protect our identities and valuables in the virtual world. Typically, we hear that organizations know they need to do something to protect their cyber assets, but don't know where to begin. Let Cyber Resilience Institute help your community create an action plan. Cyber Resilience Institute will build your community or business marketplace so that it is designed to support a collective cyber defense. Contact them for more information at cyberresilienceinstitute.org. Uh, we've got uh, an academic environment that's conducive. Uh, of the uh, five universities in Colorado that have an NSA certification, four of them are in El Paso County. Only the University of Denver is uh, outside of uh, El Paso County. Uh, the Air Force Academy is going into cyber in a very big way. Uh, UCCS uh, is head of an eight uh, university consortium. Uh, as a, you know, with its NSA certification, it's had the ability to uh, uh, grant undergraduate and graduate degrees. Uh, a big part of this national cyber center that we're going to set up is going to be involved in workforce development. Time after time, when I talk to companies uh, about uh, uh, cybersecurity companies in Colorado Springs, all they talk about is their workforce needs. Mm -hmm. And so we, that needs to be a big part of uh, uh, what we're involved in figuring out, you know, what the marketplace really needs. What I find out is that in some instances, 
you know, colleges and universities have basically transformed their IT department into a cyber department and they're teaching skills that were okay for IT but not relevant to the w real world needs of, of companies in the, in the cyber arena. Uh, we got to make sure that we're up to date and able to adapt to the uh, rapidly changing environment uh, and uh, offering workforce development that's, you know, keeping up with all the advances. Um, so, uh, and then that, uh, the third part of that triad is all the cybersecurity companies located here. There's, we've got 85 some um, uh, cyber companies here. Mm -hmm. And so we think we've got a great dynamic uh, and we've been working on that, and then uh, last couple of months, along comes the governor. He's come back from a trip to uh, Israel, seen a cyber uh, security center there, and said, we need to do this in Colorado, and was quickly convinced, uh, not only by folks here, but uh, throughout Colorado, that Colorado Springs is the place to do that. And so we are uh, setting up uh, a... Uh, you know, the exact name is not yet determined, although we have a 501c3 certification or uh, 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 tax uh, status. Um, uh, we're going to have a, a center physically located in Colorado Springs. We're taking over the TRW building on North Nevada that is owned by uh, UCCS. We're getting an appropriation from the legislature for $8 million to renovate that. And we're going to start with three prongs. And the first one to be set up is a national um, cyber institute, a training program. Uh, there's lots of training available for private sector executives and things like that, but right now there's very little available for uh, public officials, people like myself who don't have a, a cyber background but need to know uh, what questions to be asking, mm -hmm. you know, my city staff to make sure we are protecting ourselves uh, against certain vulnerabilities. And we're going to start with the National Governors Association. We think we'll have our first program probably in November uh, here in Colorado Springs. Uh, we'll follow up with the National Conference of Mayors. Uh, uh, we've got folks with contacts, obviously the National AGs Association and things like that. The second component uh, will be both workforce development and uh, research and public policy. Uh, this is a nascent area and uh, uh, there'll be a lot of uh, fleshing out of public policy and law over the next, you know, uh, several years. And we want to be at the forefront of those discussions. Uh, the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs will take the lead in what our uh, workforce development um, uh, program looks like. And then finally, uh, we will have some sort of rap rapid response uh, uh, capabilities. Uh, whether it's uh, the type of thing where we can a actually deliver from the center a response to an intrusion or whether, uh, based on the nature and sophistication of it, we need to refer it out to uh, companies that we work with, uh, that remains to be seen. But uh, the amazing thing to me is as we've begun these discussions, how much uh, has come along from the uh, periphery, folks uh, deeply involved in manufacturing, uh, you know, cyber security, cyber manufacturing. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to uh, create a presence in Colorado Springs uh, to be part of this. Uh, the, the conversations uh, uh, with, uh, and some of the people we're attracting to the board, um, uh, Rhett Hernandez, uh, who set up uh, Army, uh, cybersecurity. Uh, uh, he now operates out of Washington, D.C. Uh, the chairman is going to be a, a former head of uh, Goldman Sachs and very involved in f uh, cybersecurity from a financial uh, standpoint. And we just think we're attracting the kind of people that are going to uh, be able to uh, help us make this uh, a real center of attention in the cyber area. We'll be right back with the rest of today's show right after these brief messages from our sponsors. Since the year 2000, Bocor has had a history of being a leader in the Colorado cybersecurity community. They have served many front range customers in both government and commercial industries. Right now, Bocor is looking for qualified cybersecurity professionals and offering competitive salaries, comprehensive benefit packages, tuition support, and exciting career opportunities working with cutting edge technology. 
If this sounds like you and you have a desire to guide our customers through the treacherous cybersecurity landscape, consider joining the BOCOR team. Visit us today at www.bocor.com. That's BOCOR.com. B O E C O R E.com. Cyber Resilience Institute helps build strong cyber communities designed to prevent members from attack. Like building a neighborhood watch, it takes coordination and a sharing community to protect our identities and valuables in the virtual world. Typically, we hear that organizations know they need to do something to protect their cyber assets, but don't know where to begin. Let Cyber Resilience Institute help your community create an action plan. Cyber Resilience Institute will build your community or business marketplace so that it is designed to support a collective cyber defense. Contact them for more information at cyberresilienceinstitute.org. That's interesting. So all these players, now I heard financial industry, military, university, manufacturing. manufacturing um, Kind of sounding a little bit rounder than, you know, at first I heard a lot of university and government and it really seemed to be a, a focus on that information security from a government perspective. So do you, do you see that you're rounding out more so and not just... Oh yeah, it will be more than just government. I mean, uh, um, uh, the a uh, uh, lot of companies, of course, are already, you know, they have companies on contract that are doing a lot of their cybersecurity and stuff like that. But a lot of uh, um, companies are also looking for direction mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we hope to be uh, able to help them out. Um, yeah, this will have a big uh, private component, there's no question about it. Okay. What do you see for critical infrastructure? Have you included, reached out any big proponents in that area yet? Well, in terms of, are you talking funding and things critical like that? Critical infrastructure security. Yeah. Um, uh, we'll see. Let me just tell you a little bit about uh, 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 funding. One of the great things about the TRW building, I mean, it was initially constructed. It's, it had a skiff. Mm -hmm. uh, it has 18-inch walls. It's, it's really easy to convert to the type of uh, secure facility that we want to have. Uh, we are uh, very uh, uh, pleased with our level of uh, private sector investment uh, by, um, you know, we'll, um, we'll be able to hire an executive director or a CEO, we're still debating what that title's going to look like, uh, with some, you know, uh, substantial compensation uh, as a result of that private sector investment. And we hope to be able to uh, start out with maybe three or four additional uh, employees. And uh, um, I, I'm, you know, I'm quite confident that uh, this is going to move pretty quickly. Okay. So um, as, a, as a government official, and you're also on the board of the NCIC, do you see any word that that could be conflict of interest? Well, we'll see. If, it, if, it, if there is, then we'll do something about that. Um, uh, the governor uh, started out as the chairman, and uh, because uh, he's the guy that's going to sign the bill, that's going to deliver the $8 million to it, uh, he stepped out of that uh, capacity, and we'll see whether there's any... Uh, sorts of uh, uh, impediments uh, for me. As of right now, I don't see any. Mm -hmm. uh, but that uh, that could potentially develop. We'll see. It'll be, be an issue. Yeah. So as far as, um, you know, everything seems to be under one wing right now. You're looking at the NCIC. I heard a lot of that is the university's, you know, local um, education and everything. Do you think that uh, your efforts going to support many, you know, outside of the NCIC? you know, cyber efforts and things like that? Good. Just yeah, very much so. And as you know, uh, in the workforce development area, we're not just talking degrees, we're talking certifications. And uh, uh, a lot of companies don't need anybody with, a, with degrees. They need people with, uh, with experience that they can provide additional experience to and get them certified in, in, in certain areas. And we want to be able to... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, meet the employer's needs across the board. Okay. So one thing I see, and I always ask everybody this, I've been going to cybersecurity conferences for 10 years. Every year, the average age gets older by a year. Is that right? How are we going to capture? I mean, I heard you speak at the, was it the, the event back in October, or was the War College event? Okay. And if you look through the room, 
there's hardly anybody there under their 40s. I don't know if you've noticed this dynamic, but cybersecurity in general seems to be the decision makers of the companies, the seasoned people who have vested interest in what's going on with the organization. But how are we going to engage that younger generation? Because that's really what we need. Well, I, uh, I think we're going to do it. Um, and I've had, it's interesting, I've had a lot of parents call me uh, in the last couple of uh, months and saying, you know, my kid is in uh, um, such and such a program at such and such a university and uh, they're interested in getting into this area. What, what do you think is going to develop here and things like that? As I said, I, I think we're going to need uh, people with some diplomatic skills uh, and may get degrees in these areas and stuff like that. But we're also going to need, I, I had one small company, cyber company uh, in, and you may identify with this company, he was telling me, I don't, I don't need degree people. I need young people who were kind of nerdy in high school, didn't go to the prom, uh, have a little uh, purple in their hair, and uh, uh, weren't involved in athletics, went home after school and got on the computer and uh, have the kind of skills that I can take and turn into some really relevant skills and get them some certifications and they can make eighty thousand hundred thousand dollars a year and um, I think there's gonna be a really a great marketplace uh, mm -hmm. for uh, for young people and uh, we just got to impress them that this is going to be an area of great opportunity in the future and they need to get prepared for it we'll be right back with the rest of today's show right after these brief messages from our sponsors Cyber Resilience Institute helps build strong cyber communities designed to prevent members from attack. Like building a neighborhood watch, it takes coordination and a sharing community to protect our identities and valuables in the virtual world. Typically, we hear that organizations know they need to do something to protect their cyber assets, but don't know where to begin. Let Cyber Resilience Institute help your community create an action plan. Cyber Resilience Institute will build your community or business marketplace so that it is designed to support a collective cyber defense. Contact them for more information at cyberresilienceinstitute.org. So that's, that's kind of the thing. I mean, but if you look at what attracts, say, that demographic, um, San Antonio has a big presence in cybersecurity, um, and the Austin San Antonio is very big in that millennial generation and you know around that age and they they have the the nightlife and the the, the city river the river walk well it all I mean, comes from jobs let's face it it does um, and let's never forget that just in the last month uh Colorado springs was rated by u.s news and report as the fifth most desirable place to live who are we right next to austin and raleigh durham who are we way ahead of San Antonio, Seattle, Portland, all those sort of things that everybody says, oh, why can't we be like, more like Portland? I say, oh, like that company that's, or that city that's, you know, 15 below us and the most desirable place in America uh, to live. We create the jobs. The, night, uh, the, the private uh, marketplace creates all the amenities. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a great uh, outdoors. We've got cycling. We've got hiking, all that sort of thing. Uh, if our bars aren't cool enough, they will be if people have uh, job opportunities here, uh, the market will respond. Mm -hmm. I, I'm very confident in that. So if you look at it in terms of the ultimate benefactor of cybersecurity, I've heard lots of talk about big universities, big companies, but privacy is really belongs to the individuals. So if we're focusing in this, I've been involved with four different national cybersecurity efforts and DC and you know industry consortiums and stuff and uh, the the direction that when they went towards being controlled or special interest of big companies or government the the, the population kind of migrated away the efforts either when funding was over they lost their their appeal um, <clears throat> but the focus wasn't on cybersecurity being for privacy, being for the average people. It became the big companies wanting the big data. They're not interested in protecting individual privacy as much as having access to lots of big data. And government could be say, seen as saying, big brother, they want to have access to 
what's going on and trends and the ability to enforce. And that dynamic seems to oppose the cybersecurity for the individuals and privacy. I think that's going to be a big part of what I described as the law and public policy debate that we're going to in, uh, uh, take on in the next uh, five to ten years. There's mm -hmm. going to be, because uh, you're right, um, uh, big companies uh, are going to be driven by their need for or their desire for big data, and there's going to be a uh, pushback. And I've I know there's lots of organizations uh, that represent. Uh, that pushback uh, in terms of individual uh, privacy and uh, it's going to be an interesting balancing act and it's going to be um, you know a lot of debate about where where we're eventually going to land. Do you see that that's a primary focus to work on because I mean my, my, my thoughts are after looking at those national efforts that had lots of funding come in when their funding dried up they just kind of fizzled or went well, towards a big, big, big industry. Yeah. But if we say, how can we take away from that and learn to this effort, and really that is to broaden it, economic development. How do we get 100 startups from those young millennial generation population to all have a company in this area and organize that, rather than try to focus on bringing in big universities, big companies, you know, organizations that are large that fall into that pattern of big brother and big data collection? Um, I, I think it's not going to be exclusively one or the other. And you may think it has to be one or the other. I don't think it has to be. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of interests that are going to be explored. Uh, we want this to be a sustainable sort of thing that's not mm -hmm. just dependent on the funding of one a uh, company or a couple of million billionaires or something like that. Uh, and, and we'll see what direction it, it goes. But I think this is, we want to be uh, front and center in that public policy debate. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds good. Um, so if, if you could give everybody listening some guidance as to what to look for, what's coming down the road, uh, maybe something that's you can release now that you know, we haven't really told everybody. I yet. think you'll see this... Uh, uh, whether we call it a national uh, cyber innovation center, uh, a, a uh, uh, institute, uh, I think it will be up and running by October. I think we will have um, uh, aspects of it, uh, particularly the training uh, aspects of it, uh, uh, in full force uh, then or soon thereafter. I think the uh, workforce development uh, uh, aspects of it will come very quickly. I think the uh, rapid response aspects and how exactly that works will be something that will probably take a year to flesh out exactly what direction we want to go. Mm -hmm. um, but I, uh, you know, I think you'll you'll see a little bit more of it. Uh, my guess is we'll start uh, uh, actually renovating the building in June. Uh, the appropriation should be final in another week now. Uh, then the uh, CU regents need to say, go ahead, you can mm -hmm. spend the money this way. Um, and uh, you, you'll hear more and more about it uh, over the coming months. Any support that you need that for, for part of this effort? Um, uh, we, we will probably be calling on uh, the expertise of folks in the community for service on some of the uh, advisory board. There will be a couple of you know components within it. and. Uh, those will be announced uh, from time to time, our need for expertise from the community. Okay. Okay. Well, if you, if you need anything and you'd like to, you know, we're, we're always here to use us to put the word out. So okay. So let Appreciate. us know what we can support you with here at Lobby Central as well. Appreciate that very much. All right. And thanks a lot for joining Mayor John Sethers of Colorado Springs. And uh, thanks for your insight and look forward to the progression of Colorado Springs. And hopefully in 10 years, we're 50 times the size that we are now. That's well, I, I hope the, uh, maybe in the cybersecurity arena, I hope we're not 50 times the size population-wise. <laughs> that would be uh, a bit problematic. So. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining today. Thank you. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of New Cyber Frontier. Remember to get involved. Often we think that someone else will handle privacy and security in the virtual world, but you are the only one truly in command of your virtual fate. Join our mailing list so we can keep you informed of breaking news and new releases. If you have an idea, 
If you have a question that you would like to hear answered, or if you want to get involved with our efforts, reach out to us at newcyberfrontier.com. We also encourage you to visit our sponsors' links as they are the ones that really make this show possible. I want to thank each of you for supporting the show, and we look forward to seeing you back for the next episode of New Cyber Frontier.